Welcome to Tennessee's At Home Learning Series for Literacy. Today's lesson is for all fourth graders out there, so all children are welcome to tune in. This lesson is the second in our series. My name is Valencia Smith, and I'm a fourth grade teacher at Venus Stewart Elementary in Gallatin, Tennessee. I'm so excited to be your teacher for this lesson. Welcome to my virtual classroom. If you didn't see our previous lessons, you can find them at www.tn.gov backslash education. You can still tune in to today's lesson if you haven't seen any of the others, but it might be more fun if you first go back and watch our other lessons, so since we'll be talking about things we've previously learned. Today, we will continue our closed read of the text, The Legend of Quiche, adapted from Jack London's writings by B.P. Skinner. This means B.P. Skinner rewrote the legend in his own words. Now, before we get started, to participate fully in today's lesson, you will need two pieces of paper, a pencil, a surface to write on, the student packet for ELA grade four lesson 17, which can be found at www.tn.gov backslash education. Okay, let's begin. Today starts our second of five lessons based on one text. By focusing on one text for several lessons, we have time to think deeply about the text and complete several closed reads. This means that we are able to read it many times for different purposes. Because we're reading another legend, let's review what we have learned about legends. A legend usually focuses on heroic individuals or fantastic creatures and describes an exciting adventure. It may have some basis in historical fact, something that actually happened, and includes some supernatural events, like ghosts. Let's think about what we, what we have read so far. Have we encountered any of these characteristics in the legend of Quiche? Heroic characters. I'm thinking that Quiche might end up being heroic. If you remember when we stopped yesterday, he was about to go on a hunt alone at age 13. Exciting adventure. This makes me think something exciting might happen in what we're reading today. Historical fact. Well, I know the Polar Sea is a real place and supernatural events. Nothing ghost-like has happened yet. The setting of the legend of Quiche is in a village near the Polar Sea. Do you remember where the Polar Sea is located? It is in the Arctic Ocean near the North Pole. And here's our map, North Pole, Arctic Ocean, Alaska, and Russia. Before we begin reading our next section, I would like for us to look at the illustration of the village again. Because the setting is so different that when, than when we have encountered, than what we have encountered before, I think it's good for us to study the illustration more. What do we know about the setting from what we've read? How can we connect to the illustration? We mentioned the igloos in our last lesson. I know the text mentioned the igloos. I'm also seeing what looks like spears in the hands of the people. I remember that Quiche was moving to his father's spear on the hunt. I'm sorry, was going to use his father's spear on the hunt. We know from the text that the village depends on hunting. So I'm also wondering if the fur that the people are wearing is from the animals that they've hunted. Why do you think the author included the illustration? For me as a reader, it helps me to imagine the setting, especially the closeness of the igloos. As we ended the last lesson, I asked you to finish the summary of the first part of the text. I will read you what I wrote. I want you to think about how you, how you have added any other details in yours that I didn't have in mind. The Legend of Quiche is about a 13-year-old boy named Quiche who lives in a village on the rim of the Polar Sea. When he and his mother were neglected by the villagers after his father's death, Quiche spoke to the village council. As he spoke, the elders and onlookers jeered at Quiche. Quiche had chosen to speak to the council because he and his mom 
were getting the worst meat while the council was getting the best. Also, Keish was standing up for all the others in the village who were being neglected. After he spoke to the council, they sent him away without dinner and the threat of beating him. Keish was so angry, he decided to leave on a hunting trip by himself. Did you add any details that I didn't? Sometimes when we summarize, it's hard to decide what to include and what to leave out. I think of a summary as the big picture. Now, during our first read of the legend today, we are going to continue adding details about how the character setting and events, how about the character setting and events. But today, I want us to be thinking about one question. How did Keisha's relationship with his village change throughout the story? As we talk through the text, I will draw your attention to the words and details that he, that he used and, will an, and this will answer the question. Then there will be time for you to practice thinking about how Keisha's relationship with the village changes. Finally, I will assign you independent work that you can complete after the video ends. This is the same structure we have followed for all of our lessons. Today, like always, we will capture notes and details about the text as we go. Go ahead and create a chart for the beginning, middle, and end of the story. We'll use our chart as we read the text. If you have a copy of the text, you can use it as we read together. If not, you can listen as we read aloud. Now, looking at our chart, I want us to consider what we have learned about Keisha's relationship with the village at the beginning of the story. What would you say his relationship is like with the village? Write your ideas on your chart. And thinking back to the beginning, I think he was ranked low. If you remember, the author, the author even used the word humble. Also, I remember that he and his mother were neglected or not taken care of by the village when his father died, so much so that they were starving. I will add those to Keisha's relationship with the village at the beginning of the story. I'm gonna use this to cover the middle. And this is what I have for the beginning. Ranked low, humble, neglected by village, and village let them starve. Go ahead and add that to your beginning section. Now, we are picking up our story after Keish has left for his hunting trip alone. The Legend of Keish, adapted by B.P. Skinner from Jack London's story, The Story of Keish. After several days, Keish still had not returned. His mother, grief-stricken, assumed the worst. Just when the men were preparing to mount a search for his body, Keish strode proudly into the village. Fresh killed meat draped across his shoulders. He dispatched or sent the other hunters and their dogs to where the rest of the mother bear and two half-grown cubs lay slain or killed. Keish and his elated mother ate their fill. Grief-stricken. The author made a great choice of words here to let us know how his mother felt. If you are ever stricken by grief, you are terribly upset. His mother was terribly upset with worry, assuming the worst. Have you ever heard the phrase assuming the worst before? It means you are thinking of the worst things that can happen. What do the village men think has happened to Keish? I agree. I think they thought he is dead because the text says the men were preparing to mount a search for his body. I'm guessing his dead body. Let's look closer at the last lines. Keish and his elated mother ate their fill. Do you know what elated means by the way it is used? You can use what happened to help you determine the meaning of elated. Keish comes home with three bears after his mother has been extremely worried. I think elated probably means very happy because she is no longer worried and they have meat to eat. What does ate their fill mean? That's right, it means they ate all they wanted. 
I think this line also lets us know about how Keisha's relationship with the village is changing. He dispatched or sent the other hunters and their dogs to where the rest of the mother bear and two half-grown cubs lay slain or killed. What does this tell us? Keish comes back to the village with some meat and tells the others to go get the rest. It appears that they listened. I think I'll add that to the chart. Keish kills a bear and he shares the meat. And I've already added that to our middle. Keish, Keish kills a bear and shares the meat. I wonder how this might change his relationship with the village. Let's read on to see. This section is going to start giving us to going to start telling us how the villagers feel. The village was abuzz with gossip. Everyone wanted to know the answer to the same question. How had a young quiche conquered a mother bear and her cubs? Even the smallest child knew that a mother bear is three times more dangerous than even an ice bear. There were some who were suspicious of Quiche and thought he was using magic to slay the animals. Others were simply mystified or couldn't believe it. Regardless, over time, he gained popularity and respect and people came to count on him to bring meat to the village. There was even talk of him making the next chief. Now, what do you think suspicious means? Let's listen to the sentence where it is used again. There were some who were suspicious of Quiche and thought he used magic to slay the animals. I agree. Suspicious means the villagers didn't trust that he had killed the bears by himself. How did people in the village think he killed the bears? Yes, magic. Let's look back at our legends chart. Remember that supernatural is a characteristic of a legend. Magic is something that is supernatural. Now, what do we notice about Keish? Keish is changing relationship with the villagers. Regardless, over time, he gained popularity and respect. And people came to count on him to bring meat to the village. There was even talk of making him the next chief. Jot down your ideas on your chart. On my chart, I'm going to write that some villagers are suspicious. So we're writing some villagers. Are suspicious. But we also see that Kesh, Kesh is becoming popular and respected by villagers. So let's add that to our chart as well. Kesh is becoming popular and respected by villagers. And respected. Very good. Now let's move on to see how this is affecting Keish. As for Keish, what he wanted for himself in Ikiga was a huge igloo, bigger than the chiefs. Hunting was Keish's first priority. So he told the other men of the village to make, make him an igloo more magnificent than the others. Keisha's new prosperity or wealth earned Ikiga status as the village's first woman. And all the other women went to her for advice and wisdom. Now, this is interesting. Why is Keish able to give orders to the other men? 
That's right. The men realize that Keish is bringing in lots of food. So I'm going to add others listen to Keish to our chart. Others listen to Keish. Now, how is Keisha's hunting affecting his mother, Ikiga? That's right. Other women are going to her for advice. She has moved up in rank in the village. The text even calls her the village's first woman. Well, I'm not exactly sure what that means. I'm guessing that it probably means more respected or most respected. Let's continue. Ugh luck like some others, was tormented or tortured by young Keisha's hunting victories and fed up with taking orders from him. Ugluck confronted Keish. You've been charged with dealing with evil spirits to help you hunt. Keish recoiled. How can that be? The meat is good. Are you just envious? When the council met, the men decided to spy on Keish while he was hunting. Bim and Vaughn volunteered to follow the boy on his next expedition or hunting trip and report back. How does the author let you know how Keish feels about being charged with evil spirits to hunt? The author used the word recoiled to describe how Keish reacted. Recoiled means to jerk back suddenly in shock. So Keish is shocked or surprised by the charges against him. Now, what evidence does Keish have that some might be envious? That's right. The text says that Keish is having many hunting victories and he is able to give others orders. I bet others want to the new power that Keish has. We need to add that to our chart. Some villagers envious. We're writing some villagers. envious. But we also need to add that Keish that charged with using evil spirits. So Keish is charged with using evil spirits. Here we go. Now let's see what the spies Bim and Bond find when they follow Keish. Two days later, the spies returned, brimming with excitement over what they had seen. The council convened or came together to hear their tale. We saw with our very eyes how Keish followed close behind a giant he bear, said Bim in awe. Then he got perilously or dangerously close so the bear rose up on his hindquarters and took after Keish. As the bear was chasing him, Keish dropped a white fist-sized ball on the ice, the, but the bear swallowed it up. Keish dropped more balls behind him as he ran, and the bear ate those too. After a while, the bear stopped running and started clawing at his stomach, hobbling across the ice, Howling and squealing in, in awful pain, stuttered Bond. Witchcraft, a charm, accused Ugluck. For the entire day, we followed Keish and the suffering bear. I've never seen anything like it, said Bond, amazed. And then, Klosh Kwan asked. Bim and Bond told him how they left Keish getting the bear. Wow. I can visualize this whole scene in my head. Take a moment to jot down the details you remember. <clears throat> Good. I heard Keish followed the he bear, and when it reared up, he fed it white, white fist balls, white fist sized balls. The pair, the bear had pain, and then Keish killed the bear. What can we add about the relationship with the villagers? I think beside where we wrote evil spirits, we need to write witchcraft.
good. Now, what does this tell you about what the villagers are thinking? They think it couldn't be, couldn't possibly be killing the bears by himself. It has to be something supernatural. Now, let's listen to the next part of our story. While the men spoke in council, the women hauled in the meat of the bear Kish had killed. A message was sent to Kish to ask him to come to the council. Tell them I'm too tired and hungry. My igloo is large and comfortable. Ask them to come here. Minutes later, the elders sat in order of rank and respect in Kish's comfortable igloo. Flash Kwan spoke first. So we received information about your manner of hunting. Is it witchcraft? What does this tell you about how Keisha's power in the village has changed? Remember, at the first of the story, the council sent Keish away without dinner. With his new power from hunting, he can say that they have to come to him if they want to talk. Wow, what a shift. What does this tell us about the relationship with the villagers? They are taking orders from him too. We need to add that. Let's write, council takes orders from Kish. Very good. Now, what in this section also tells us that things are changing for Kish? You are correct. He has the big igloo now. It is described as large and comfortable. Earlier in the text, Kish told the other men of the village to make him an igloo more magnificent than the others. We have evidence that this has occurred. Why do the men of the village make the igloo? I agree. I think it's because they respect him for bringing all the food to the village. Now, what does the igloo symbolize for Kish and the village? That's right. I think it is a sign of his rank in the village. Others are respecting him, so he gets the biggest igloo. Now, let's finish our story. Kish is about to reveal how he killed the bear. I'm just a boy, Kish explained. I'm ignorant of these things. I've devised or created a way to kill the ice bear with ease. That's all. It's headcraft, not witchcraft. What can you tell? Would you tell us how to use this? This can anyone do this? Asked Clash Kwan, not convinced. Any man can do this. Keish finished sucking his marrow bone and rose to tell the group of his clever hunting tactic. It's really quite simple. You take a small chunk of blubber, another name for fat, and make it hollow. Into the hole goes a sharp whalebone. Another piece of, piece of blubber fitted over the bone. Then you put it outside when it freezes into tiny balls. Keish explained that when the bear eats the balls of blubber, the fat melts, exposing the sharp ends of the whalebone. The bones tear at the bear's insides and make him terribly uncomfortable. He cannot eat, he cannot drink, he cannot sleep, Keish said with a smile. After days without being able to eat and drink, the bear makes easy prey. The council was satisfied and amazed by Keish's story. And this is how Keish rose from being an in insignificant or not important boy to becoming the head man of the village. And long as he lived, no one cried at night because there was no meat. That's interesting. Keish was accused of using witchcraft, but he said it was headcraft. What does he mean by that? Keish means that he used his head or brains to create a plan to kill the bear. Now, how did Keish kill the bear? Very good remembering. He used balls of fat filled with a sharpened whalebone. When the bear would eat it, it would rip his insides open, making him easier to kill. Let's reread the last part. What does it tell us about Keisha's relationship with the village? The council was satisfied and amazed by Keisha's story. 
And this is how Keish rose from being an insignificant boy to becoming the head man of the village. And long as he lived, no one cried at night because there was no meat. What do you think? It sounds like to me that he becomes a village, village leader because the text says head man. I wonder if that might mean chief because the chief is the head man. We have some things to add to our last column. Let's go ahead and write that he has the largest igloo. We're writing largest igloo. Now, what else do we need to add? Let's reread this line. The council was satisfied and amazed by Keisha's story. What does it tell you? I think this lets us know that they were amazed by his intelligence because of the way he was able to kill the bear. We should probably add that too. Villagers amazed by his intelligence. Villagers amazed by his intelligence. We also need to add that he became the head man. So let's add that to our chart. Keish became head man. Good. Now let's review what we've collected today. <clears throat> you have learned how to describe a character's shifting relationship with others by tracking changes in key events across the story. Our mission was to think about how Keisha's relationship changed when the village over the course, with the village over the course of the story. We thought about how Keish in the beginning of the story being neglected by the villagers. Here, then we captured how Keisha's killing of the bear changed for him. He earned respect, from, but some of the, of the villagers were still suspicious. And then finally, we saw the change in relationship. Keish was respected for his intelligence and became a lead man. Looking at the relationships in the text in this way helps us to think deeply about the interactions of the characters. Now, just like in previous lessons, we're going to take what we've learned during this lesson and write about it. Today, you get to do some creative writing based upon the notes we have taken. Think back to the beginning of the story during our first lesson and the relationship of Keish to the village and the council. I want to reread an excerpt. As I reread, jot down the words that help you understand the relationship. When my father hunted, he brought home meat, any of the best, he brought home more meat than any of the best two hunters combined, Keish explained. With his own words, he divided the meat. With his own hands, he divided the meat, and with his own eyes, he saw it that the neediest of the village received their fair share. The elders and onlookers jeered at the young boy. How dare one so young speak out in the council? Despite them, Keish continued, you speak for your wives and your mothers, so I speak for my mother, Ikiga, who should have her fair share of meat. And all we get is grizzly meat that's full of bones. The anger of the men boiled. Keish was ordered to leave the council with no dinner and was promised a beating. Keish's blood pounded in his head and his eyes flashed. Take this, you men, as my last word. My father Bach was a great hunter. When he was alive, he made certain that no widow or child ever cried at night because there was no meat. Today, many go hungry while you, the strong men of the village, suck yourselves with the best meat. What words clued you into the relationship? We see evidence of the relationship by how they reacted to each other. The onlookers and the elders jeered, anger boiled, Keish ordered to leave, Keish blood pounded and eyes flashed. The author did a fantastic job of giving us details about the relationship without saying the relationship was with the excerpt in mind in our chart, I want you to imagine how a meeting with the council might look different when Keish is the lead man. 
you're going to write your own scene with Keish as the leader. Before you begin, let's brainstorm a bit. First, flip your paper over. What words might you use to describe how the council might react to Keish speaking? Those are some great words. I thought of respect, admiration, loyalty, and approval. Now brainstorm some words that you would you would, could use to describe how Keish treats the village. My words are fair, fair, loyal, and devoted. Now finally, <clears throat> let's set up a scene. Why might the council be meeting? Take notes on your ideas. These are ideas that I have. A wolf is terrorizing the village and they must find a solution, or it has been dry and they must find a solution. What ideas did you have? Feel free to use your ideas or mine. Now here's your task for today. Using our change in relationship chart between Quiche and the villagers, write a scene with Quiche as the head man of the village. Use descriptive words to help the reader understand the new relationship between Quiche and the villagers. As you write, be sure to Establish the situation, organize the events, use dialogue, pacing, and description, use transitional words, provide a conclusion, use precise words, and use correct grammar and punctuation. For your creative activity, I want you to draw a picture to accompany your scene. And as always, I've enjoyed finishing the full story of the legend of Kish with you today. Thank you for inviting me into your home. Tomorrow, we will dig more into Kish's character. I look forward to seeing you in our next lesson in Tennessee's at-home learning series. Bye-bye.